ready? Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us, sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So, sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. So good morning, tea sippers. I hope everybody's doing good today. Happy Thursday. So I'm back with some more tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups because this tea is what? Piping hot. You guys have been asking me to do a video on the whole Black China suing the Kardashian slash Jenner clan. And so some very interesting updates came out these past two days. Like I said, I've been following up with everything, but I don't want to do a video every time something drops. So if you guys do not know... This past Monday, Kylie Jenner came out and she basically said that Black China not only threatened her, but also threatened to kill Rob Kardashian. So this is what Kylie Jenner said on the stand. She says Black China tried to kill her brother, Rob Kardashian, and threatened her in text messages during her bombshell testimony. Kylie took to the stand on Monday during an ongoing Kardashian-China court battle, testifying that she remembers seeing her brother shortly after his big blowout fight with China, where he alleged that China pulled out a gun on him. He used the word, she's trying to kill me. I assumed it was a death struggle. I remember him being very upset while trying to explain what happened. She said her brother told her that he was playing video games when China went behind him and placed an iPhone cord around his neck. Jenner also testified that she remembers waking up one morning to threatening text messages from Black China. She sent me a bunch of devil emojis that said, counting the days to beat me, Jenner testified. Now, I remember that. I remember doing a video on this. This is when Kylie was dating Tyga. And at the time, she was underage. When it came out publicly via Amber Rose that Kylie was dating Tyga, that is when China took to social media and she posted that text message, okay? So then what happens is that Black China's attorney, Lynn, she comes out and she asks Kylie, she says, well, why didn't you report it to the police if you felt, you know, threatened? And Kylie says, I took it as an empty threat. Then she goes on to say that Tiger told her that China had issues with drugs and alcohol, and he also told her about an incident where China allegedly used a knife and sliced him on his arm. Kylie also admitted that she was a little bit upset when she learned on the internet that her brother had became engaged to China. I was actually happy for my brother, but at the same time, I was curious as to how things would go with China. I actually wanted to be cool with China. I actually spent a lot of time with her son, despite everything. I wanted it to work out for my brother. Then Black China's attorney asks Kylie, do you feel like Black China dated Rob out of spite because you were dating Tyga? Kylie replies back and she says, no, I was hoping no for my brother's sake. She also added that she didn't think that Black China truly loved her brother because of the physical threats that ensued during their tumultuous relationship. I just don't know how you could love somebody and do that to them. So I personally thought everything was fake. So that is what Kylie Jenner said on the stand on Monday when talking about her brother and Black China. So now... Rob Kardashian took the stand yesterday, and he had a lot to say about their situation. So this is what Rob is saying. Now, Rob is Black China's ex-fiance. He's also a Kardashian, and he's the father of Black China's second child dream. So Rob says that Black China beat him with a metal rod and pulled a gun on him during a heated argument. Rob said the night of December 14, 2016, started off with them joking around on her social media, with both of them posting footage of them kissing and laughing. Inside the courtroom, a video was shown of Rob waving bands of $100 bills and throwing it at China with the model looking pleased. That night allegedly became very violent with drama lasting until the next morning. Rob alleges that Black China pulled out a gun on him not once but twice and hit him with a metal rod and scratched him and struck him with an iPhone cord. Rob goes on to say, She landed several blows on my face and on my back with a metal pole. She ripped my shirt earlier in the evening and we were throwing money around on our Snapchat. In the beginning, I thought it was playful. I didn't think it got serious until the second gun encounter. You don't point a gun at your fiance's head, whether you think it's loaded or not. When asked by Black China's attorney, why didn't he show bruising in the video recorded after the incident? 
Rob shot back. She landed several blows on my body with a metal rod. Not everyone is going to bruise just because somebody hits you. It didn't leave a mark when I had a gun put to my temple and a cord around my neck. I'm sure that left the mark, but no, I did not need a Band-Aid. Then Rob continued by saying, she was on cocaine and alcohol. She has a history of doing this. Just because I don't have marks doesn't mean it's not true. Stop putting that out there. It's not fair. This was a two-hour testimony, and he was clearly getting agitated by some of the questions. He was raising his voice several times, and he took issues to the things that Black China's lawyer was saying to him. Then he was asked about spending New Year's Eve with Black China after the fight, and Rob says this, I have social anxiety, and I gained a lot of weight. She forced me to go out the house. I went to dinner, and that was that. I wasn't happy, and going out of the house after she put a gun to my head, she put that on her Snapchat, but that is not me being happy. That's just fake. Rob then said he wanted to make his relationship work and supported China, with whom he shares a five-year-old daughter. But she repeatedly and allegedly abused him. He said he would often sleep in his car until the next morning. Rob said he was in a very low and weakest point of his life when he first started speaking to China. By the time, at that time he was single, but also messing with other women. I was probably at the lowest place in my life and she was the one person who brought me in. I just felt comfortable with her and I was at my loneliest point. I ignored all the bad things and I have a very loving family, but I just gave myself to her. He also went on to state that he never loved her when he proposed to her. He said that he did that for publicity for their now defunct E-series, Rob in China. So Rob Kardashian was definitely spilling the tea, honey. It was some pretty big stuff with Rob on the stand, and it was actually really sad to hear how tumultuous, toxic, and violent the relationship was, at least from Rob Kardashian's standpoint. So he says when he met China, he was in a vulnerable state, and basically she accepted him. But he says it wasn't real love. It was fake just so she could pitch a show to E! Network that would bring her more money. And that's exactly what she got. The Kardashian spinoff, Rob and China, well, that's until the assault in question, which is at the crux of this case. Under sworn testimony, Rob says China has a history assaulting him and says that night she tried to kill him. He says China pointed a gun at his head twice, tried to strangle him with an iPhone cord and whacked his face and body several times with a six foot metal rod. Now, this next piece of video, this is of China leaving the courthouse today, and this was shot by 12 year old Zion Cooper. So China. She says that the Kardashians told network producers about the attack that she says never happened. And that's what led to this $100 million defamation case with defendants Kim and Khloe Kardashian, Kylie Jenner, and their mom, Kris Jenner. China's attorney's clear stance today was, well, if she beat you so badly, Rob, why didn't you go to the hospital or have any visible injuries in the pictures you posted the next day? So also on the stand today was Walter Mosley. He was actually called back to the stand. Now, he's the one who negotiated China's contract, and he said he never actually got an official notice from the production company that there was a season two, which emphasizes that it was never a sure thing. He also said he understood it was going to happen because an official press release came out about it. Uh, So in his eyes, season two was going to happen. So Rob Kardashian was definitely spilling the tea. And like I always say, once again, everything that glitters is not gold. You know, we saw them on social media. It looked like she was helping him out. It looks like she was bringing him out of his shell and they were in love. But now we're hearing it was literally fake. You know, she was abusing him, allegedly. Um, He only proposed to her to help, you know, keep their show going. So it just goes to show you that the things that you see on social media and these so-called couple goals, a lot of it is bullshit behind the scenes. But now as far as Black China goes, this is what she had to say about the incident. As we all know, she's suing the whole clan for $100 million for future lost wages because she claims that the family conspired to kill her reality TV show. So China basically said last week that she was joking when she put an iPhone cord to Rob Kardashian's neck and pointed a gun upward. China claimed that the threats were not serious and Rob appeared to find her actions amusing. She says, it was not loaded, she testified. I would never shoot Rob or anyone at that. I was just joking like, ha ha. I don't know who jokes like that, bitch, but you put a gun in my head. I'm pressing charges, okay? I don't find it funny, but you know, but maybe that's how they get down in DC. I don't think anybody would find somebody putting a gun to their head as funny. 
especially if that gun accidentally goes off, then it's not going to be ha-ha. So then anyways, China also goes on to claim this. She says that she and Rob were not invited to the January 2017 meeting at Chris's house, where the family allegedly spoke to producers and the network executives about canning season two of her show. Emails revealed in court on Monday that Kylie agreed to have her own show that could replace Rob and China, while Chloe wrote an email that she was concerned about her brother and what Rob and China's toxic relationship could do to their brand. Another email with Jeff Old, a former executive vice president at the E! Network, testified Monday as well that, that he and his colleagues read that the entire family was opposed to a second season of Rob and China. However, the rest of Old's email said that he hoped at that time that Rob and China could get counseling, which could become a storyline within their main show, Keeping Up the Kardashian. He also went on to say that the family was on board with that idea. Old said that that was the best option that he could come up with at the time, since he would not green light Rob and China's show because it was no longer the lighthearted program that he initially pitched. So now, speaking of producers, what's very interesting is this. Now, last week, this also came out. So let me go ahead and share this with you guys. Jeff Jenkins, a former co-president of Bunham and Murray, said this about the 2016 series. He testified in court on Friday that the couple had never secured a second season of the series. During the testimony, Jenkins claimed that the networks, including BT, VH1, Lifetime, and MTV, were uninterested in picking up the show featuring Black China alone and that he wouldn't back a second season due to the pair's volatility. I would not pick up the show, he admitted, via Zoom from his home. There was no more Rob and China. Jenkins said he greenlit the first season after meeting with the couple where China came off as witty and Rob Kardashian appeared to be happy in his relationship. That was very exciting, Jenkins said. That was the first and the last time I saw the couple happy. By the time the show began filming, the pair were at odds. She was furious with him and he was furious with her. It was very negative. It was very difficult to shoot a show called Rob and China in Love when they're not even talking to each other. The producer also rebuttaled Black China's claims that the Kardashians used their influence at the E! Network to kill their show. So that is what the producer is saying and, you know, we most of us watch the Rob and China show. I remember talking about it, you know, on Twitter back then when I used to tweet. And I thought it was very toxic. I didn't understand why she was always screaming and yelling, especially being pregnant. I'm like, this is not a good look. I don't really see a happy couple. It seemed like after a while, like anything was ticking her off. And I get it. Sometimes when you're pregnant, you might be irritated. But to me, that wasn't like a normal, I'm just a little bit irritated because I'm pregnant and I'm un uncomfortable. After a while, it seemed like they detested each other and they didn't trust each other. Are you still texting bitches? Yes or no? You know, so I don't know why they would greenlit a number two because by the end of season one, it just seemed really, really dysfunctional. But now, Black China's fans, they dug up some receipts. So this might show that the producer could have been lying. If y'all don't know, receipts were found yesterday on the internet because y'all know the internet don't sleep, honey. That producer claims that the show was never greenlit, but Black China's fans, they found an old Deadline article from 2016, and it says Rob and China renewed for a second season by E. And in that article, it goes on to say, E has picked up an eight-episode second season of the hit series Rob and China for the premiere in 2017. The September 11 premiere episode of Rob and China, which follows Rob Kardashian and China and, and China Black, her name is Black China, but okay. His fiance and the mother of his newborn daughter, Dream, remained the cable's most watched unscripted launch of 2016 amongst adults 18 to 34, women 18 to 34, and women 18 to 49, according to, according to E and Nielsen stats. Robin China's romance struck a chord with our viewers who were engaged in their story even before we started filming the first season, said Jeff Old. EVP of Programming and Development at E. We are excited to share the next chapter of this story. So like it or not, I have no dog in this fight personally. I don't care who wins and who loses. But those are receipts showing that somebody greenlit something because it was on social media. It was announced to the, you know what I'm saying, to the internet. It was written up. So... Do I think that the Kardashians put a halt on the show? I absolutely do. 
Do I feel like the Kardashians use their influence to stop the show? I absolutely do. Do I blame them for doing that? Absolutely not. At the end of the day, that's their brother. Okay? Blood is always going to be thicker than water. They're going to stand by their brother. And if you're abusing my brother, if you're putting hands on my brother, I'm going to have an issue with that. And I'm going to use my power to shut you down. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it wouldn't make sense for them to co-sign them doing this show if they see that their brother is in a bad place mentally. You know, he's physically being abused. Why would they co-sign the show? Why would they want the show to continue airing, showing them arguing and fighting? Because, again, as we all know, the Kardashians are all about their brand. They're all about image. You know what I'm saying? And this show was not a good look for their brand. And they're going to put their brand first. Pure point blank. So I'm not shocked that they did that. But that's what you're supposed to. You're supposed to stand by your family. It's no different than Tokyo Tony constantly being outside the courtroom. You know what I'm saying? Acting a fool. And they say she was threatening the judge one day. All types of crazy stuff. And she says, I'm going to get you a judge. You don't threaten judges. Why is she out there? Because she's standing by her daughter's side. That is what family does. You stand by your family. So I'm not shocked, but I do feel like, you know, there's definitely some lies being spun and everybody's trying to backtrack. I wish they would just submit like, yeah, we got her show shut down. She's toxic. She was abusing our brother instead of lying, you know. But again, they're going to, you know, deny it because they don't want to pay this $100 million lawsuit child. So it's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out. So, y'all, let me know y'all's thoughts. What do you guys think about the entire situation? Are you Team Kardashian? Are you Team Black China? Are you like me, Team I Don't Care? <laughs> this is rich people's problems. It is what it is. So, let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to like the video. Make sure you're still subscribed to the channel, honey. And also feel free to share the video as well. I will talk to you guys later. Have a good day. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.